Now, Facebook parent company Meta is launching an app that will directly challenge Twitter. It's called Threads and will be rolled out on Thursday. Twitter has been heavily criticized since Elon Musk took over, leaving many users searching for an alternative platform to air their thoughts. Let's find out more now from tech expert Toby Shapshak, who joins us virtually. Uh, Toby, um, uh, thanks so much for your time as always. Now, uh, this announcement that this launch uh, is happening on Thursday comes just days after Twitter boss Elon Musk attracted criticism, of course, for announcing that temporary cap on how many posts users can read on the social media site. But surely this has been in the works for some time now already. I, I mean, I'm sure... I'm sure you would think with most companies that would be the case, but unfortunately with uh, with with Facebook, no, sorry, with Twitter, Musk has proven that he kind of makes it up as he goes along. And that's, that's kind of tragically unfortunate because this is a company, I mean, recent, the New York Times reported that, that for the, for the five weeks from the beginning of, I think it was April to the first week of May, uh, the U.S. advertising income for Twitter was down 59%. I mean, it's it's remarkable the the the, the hemorrhage le the the hemorrhaging of money that has happened in this little while, and it, and it's quite remarkable that he continues to go on like he he does, destroying his own value. He's mm -hmm. the one who paid 44 billion dollars for it. So uh, the, the latest kind of quirky thing is you can only view 600 tweets. I, I don't know anyone, I think, who <laughs> looks at 600 tweets a day. I, I mean, I, I certainly don't. I mean, I'm, I'm good luck to you if, you if you need to. The other thing is this is this shutting down of TweetDeck. I've used TweetDeck since the very beginning. It's a really great interface. I mean, it's just think about this in terms of a business idea. You run a really big business that is losing hands hand over fist you've already told the bbc the value of your of your or, or you've told your staff that's that's been reported by BBC, bbc that the value of your company is halved since you bought it um and and the one thing that everybody likes and all the power users use is called tweet deck and you're going to stop them using it and make them pay for it and if and if they're not a user they're a company they have to pay i mean in south african terms that's 18000 rand there's no <laughs> business in south africa not an ad agency nobody uh, no one who makes money not even you know fifa can afford that mm. kind of ridiculous amount of money so so along comes uh, mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, and even though him and Elon Musk won't meet in a cage fight, I mean, if that's not the, the, the one, I mean, I'm not a fan of boxing or mixed martial arts, but I could really like eat a bowl of popcorn watching the two of them have a go at each other. Um, but Zuckerberg has, thinks he's uh, seen a chink in Twitter's armor and he has, has launched a, a text alternative to um Twitter called Threads. It's called an Instagram app. I went to look for it this evening in the in the um, uh, the Apple Store, and I, I found it and I signed up to get it. It downloads tomorrow. I can't say that I'm going to ever do more than just play with it. Mm. Uh, you can disagree with many things about Musk, but one of the things he did say, and I'm not sure of the exact quote, is something about why would you want to be even further under Zuckerberg's thumb? And, and really, the, the the two most evil companies in the world are Google and Facebook, and the sooner people realize that, the better. Mm. They they spy on you. It's called surveillance capitalism. They try and find out as much as they possibly can about you to show you advertising. They are not your friends. Mm. You are the fodder, and the real customer is the advertiser. So the sooner we learn that, the better. And 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 Musk, for once, is right. I do not want more Mark Zuckerberg scrutinizing anything else about me. Um, and of course, the reason Musk has has uh, has has instituted this restriction on how many uh, tweets people can use is because of fears about data scraping and and this is happening mm. the the ai models the the generative ai models like open ai and the rest are scraping all the data off the internet so that they can train uh, how they use them they're called mm. large language models llms and of course this is what uh 
Musk is trying to mitigate against, and he said as much. He said the the AI services are scraping as much data off off the off off Twitter as they can, and therefore you have to log in. But all he's doing is driving people into the arms of anybody else yeah. who runs a service. I've tried uh, T2. I've signed up for Blue Sky. I've tried to log on to Mastodon. I mean, just creating an account on Mastodon was like, you know, as much as trying to go to city power and pay your bill. You know, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing a thread about that and I, I mean, considered I considered reading oh. a thread about how to sign on and I gave up very, very soon after that. I was like, this is not going to happen. But what kind of uptake do you think there'll be to threads? Because I keep hearing people say more and more, oh, but Facebook is the place for your grannies and your aunties to look at pictures of their grandchildren and to post those good morning, good night posts that somebody makes somewhere in the world because there's an unending flow of them. So A... Who is it targeted at? And then secondly, will we see vast amount of people leaving Twitter? Or are these threats of people saying they'll just leave Twitter once and for all, the same as people threatening to, um, to uh, boycott Woolworths, for instance? Well, it, it depends why you want to boycott <laughs> Woolworths. I mean, I have, I, have many, I have many reasons. I mean, some of them are entirely spurious. Some of them might be even valid. Uh, none of them have anything to do with hot cross buns. But <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, you know, the, the social media tells you something very interesting about the world, and it tells you what people on social media think about the world. It doesn't tell you about the world. It tells you about the subset of users who want to be on social media, who want to rant and rave and say their things. That's a kind of... Uh, extreme and perhaps cynical way of looking at it, but it's it's also not particularly untrue, is it? I mean, the bottom line is people on social media are not the real world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lots of people think they have a have a real world following, but actually they're just on social media. So, so it doesn't really tell us the state of the world as it is. Uh, Twitter remains quite a remarkable company in spite of the fact that it's never really been profitable. Uh, it's a it's a bit of a kludge. I don't even know if that's a technical term, but it's it's kind of, you know, it's sticky tape over over band-aid, over so many things put together and and trying to keep it all kind of running together. And then Elon Musk came along and fired, you know, I don't know, almost all of their staff. They went from 8,000 employees to, to 1,500. Um, and, of course, all of the technical problems that were foreseen have happened. And, and the consequences have been the, the company's lost half its value. And despite all of this, despite all of this abuse, it's kind of, I, I feel this is how ANC voters must feel. <laughs> You're in an abusive relationship with Twitter and they, you know, no matter what you do, they still treat you badly. Uh, they still prioritize advertisers over you, not as bad as Facebook and Google, but, you know, you're still, you're still the product. Um, but we still love it. And us journos, for some reason, journos and, and you know, other, you know, intellectuals love it. And there, and there is a kind of serendipitous quality of our Twitter. There's a there's a quality of interaction I find there that you don't find anywhere. I mean, I've recently logged onto Twitter and, and uh, uh, Instagram, and they, I, I mean, sorry, onto Facebook and Instagram, which I've recently logged onto, and they, they are appalling. You know, for every post by someone you actually follow, there's one suggested, one promoted, one. I mean, it's, it is a really terrible user experience, both Facebook and Instagram. And, I, and I, I'm appalled at how bad they have become. And yes, Facebook is only for the silver surfers. Who is the person I know that uses Facebook the most? My 94 95 year old mother. Yeah, and my 70, is my 70 something mother as well. <laughs> Hello, hello, her mom, you know. <laughs> Hi, mom, no offense. <laughs> and then she uses Facebook to be able to tell the rest of us on WhatsApp whose birthday it is so that we don't forget to wish them on Instagram. <laughs> The list just goes. I know, it's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? I never have to know when Jewish holidays are or whose birthdays because my mother tells me, and I just want to say it's great. thanks, Ma. No, it, it, it really is. It really is great. And it's a, re a real great um, connection for them to the outside world. So thank goodness for Facebook in, in that regard. Um, Toby, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much. But true, but it, but it tells... 
but it tells you everything you need to know about Facebook's prospects. And this match has been, just very quickly, this match has been evident for a long time. Facebook is facing an existential crisis, in fact, in the fact that 15 to 25-year-olds in developed markets do not use Facebook. Why? Who wants to go and hang out in the same shopping mall, town square, playground as your grandparents or your parents? So, so the youth in developed markets fled Facebook a long time ago. It's very different in developing markets where people are poorer, they don't have the kind of access, they don't have the ability to go to shopping malls sometimes. So the the digital shopping mall, the digital town square, I'm mm. sorry, Elon Musk, is Facebook in the developing yeah. world. And that is where the vast majority of Facebook users are. But Facebook's Facebook has a crisis that, that is of its own making, which is that the, the youngsters of the world, the next bunch yeah. of middle class shoppers are not using Facebook. They're using Instagram and increasingly they're using TikTok and, and TikTok is no better, let me tell you. We could, yeah, we could and, spend and, half and, an hour and, talking and about And sadly, it. it also means that a lot of the fake news and that kind of thing that makes it onto Facebook, you know, reaches the ears of people that are, are unable to really navigate well, what's well, real on, and what's not on, real. And that's more work for us because then we get these posts, is this right? Is it not? No, mom, it's not right. Don't send it along. Just delete it and that kind of thing. But Toby, we have to go. That's a Just don't let your mother use TikTok. <laughs> No, 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 no. But Don't let her use TikTok my mom because a... on TikTok the Titanic never sank. Listen, she's a bit of a she's a bit of a prospect on Instagram. They go and find a <laughs> Ray Gordon. She's already got a bit of a following <laughs> just for her cooking. <laughs> Toby Shapshak, thank you so much for your time this evening. Always good chatting to you and picking your brain. We will not see each other on Facebook. We're